Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa ala ala sayyidina wa maulana Muhammad wa ashabi wa barik wa sallim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Rabbana zidna ilma Rabbana zidna ilma Rabbana zidna ilma Warzuqna fahma Ya arhamar rahimin Bihaqi abdika wa habibika wa rasulika Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My beloved Jamaatul Muslimin, my respected elders, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, and all our beautiful children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator, the nourisher, and sustainer of the universe. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah. Wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyyana wa maulana muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. And I bear witness that I believe in all the prophets. And I bear witness that sayyidina muhammad ibn abdullah, rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the absolute final of all divine emissaries and prophets from Allah. We thank Almighty Allah for the precious gift of life that Allah has given us. And we thank Allah for the honor by making us from the honorable members of the Ummah of Sayyiduna Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I don't think anyone will really disagree with me when I tell you that we are actually living in the era of Dajjal. The Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was very serious and emphatic in his warning to us that the greatest fitna that this world will ever witness will be the coming of Dajjal. But the Prophet Sallam also told us that prior to the main Dajjal who will make his appearance, there will be approximately Thalathuna Dajjalun, approximately 30 minor Dajjals will operate in the world, preparing for the great coming of the evil master, the ultimate Dajjal. And those Dajjals are very much operating, orchestrating, and function fully by bringing about disorder, chaos, and dysfunction in our world today. Last week only, the three major religions of the world, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all three of us together went through a very holy and sacred period. The Jews having celebrated their Passover, our Christian brethren celebrating Good Friday and Easter, and we also every week celebrate Friday as a day of Eid for us, but the following day, the Saturday night, it was also a holy and sacred period, the night of Ruah, Laylatul Nisfi min Sha'ban for us, which is sacred. And while the followers of these three religions were on very high levels of God consciousness, of worshipping God in their ways, there was a, what they claim, a mysterious burning of a fire in the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris in France. And at the same time, while that fire is burning in France, they say a mysterious fire also broke out at Masjid al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. And the fire brigade had to rush in, fighting for hours to doze that flames and to save Masjid al-Aqsa. At the same time, I saw this clip from True News where non-Muslim panelists were discussing this issue 
and also bringing to the attention the report which is in the Times of Israel, which is a Jewish Israeli newspaper, where they quoted a certain rabbi by the name of Shlomo Avner, who is an extremist radical amongst the Zionists. And he states in this paper that our Jews must realize that our number one enemy is Christianity. And at the same time, they found written with graffiti on the walls that all Christians must be chased out of Jerusalem and that Jesus Christ is a monkey. When I Billah, I'm even ashamed of saying this because to me and to every Muslim, Jesus, Nabi Isa alayhi salam, is beloved to us. He's our prophet. Just like Nabi Musa, Nabi Dawood, Nabi Sulaiman, Nabi Yahya, Nabi Isa is also our prophet, including the last of all prophets, Nabi Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this rabbi is pushing the idea that Jews must feel free to burn down all the churches in Israel, occupied Palestine. They say it openly, advocating this evil teachings. Yet mainstream media does not feel fit to carry these reports. It's amazing. It shows you who is really controlling media and who is out to control the minds of people. And while this was going on, another diabolical mindset was in operation. A mindset of absolute hate a mindset of blood spilling and blood shedding. Because we find that over that holy period, while a church was packed with worshippers in Sri Lanka, and while tourists to Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka is enjoying their breakfast in the five-star hotels, people who were indoctrinated with an evil mind, strap bombs to themselves. And while people were worshipping and singing praises of God, the next moment there was this massive explosion where the church was blown to smithereens, heads and body parts laying everywhere, blood spattered on the grounds and on the walls of the churches. I'm asking you, what kind of mind can create atrocities like this? Where you bring instantly such chaos that many men and women, husbands and wives who either die together or the one died leaving a partner behind, making so many children into immediate orphans, thinking nothing of the sacredness of life. My concern is whenever something like this happens in the world, the first thing Muslims everywhere say, I hope it's not Muslims. So they have conditioned our mind that everything that happens is our fault, as if Islam is teaching this. Yes, there is a sick diabolical mindset that is growing in our ummah. A doctrine and an ideology of Wahhabism that has no sacred value for life. If you disagree with them, they make you mushrik and murtad because then they make your blood lawful for them to shed or to spill your blood permissible for them to kill you. 
It is this evil mindset of hatred which has got nothing to do with Islam because Islam is peace. Islam is positive outreach. Islam is rahmah and mercy. It is this mindset that is slowly coming into our community. We Muslims hate Muslims. We Muslims fight with Muslims. We already have so many enemies trying to destroy Islam and to demonize Muslims, then we still have time to fight each other. Thus, we become our own greatest enemy. Our own greatest enemy. This mindset that tells you that it is permissible for you to kill people if they're not of the same religion, or they don't want to accept Islam. In fact, la ikaraha fi deen, there is no compulsion. You cannot force a person to become a Muslim. Any person who becomes Muslim must become Muslim with their whole heart. It must be truly optional. That person's own mind must be made up. I cannot force another person to embrace Islam. So those people who think that life is cheap and that they can just go about and kill people, listen to what Allah says to them in Surah Al-Ma'idah, which is the fifth surah of the Quran, verse 32. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Katabna ala bani Israel annahu Man qatala nafsan bi ghayri nafs aw fasadin fil ard fa ka'annama qatala an-nas jami'a wa man ahyaha fa ka'annama ahya an-nas jami'a Allah after Allah say I've made life sacred and Allah refers here to the context of this surah Allah refers to the first murder that was created when Qabil killed Habil, the one son of Nabi Adam killed his own brother. It was the first murder that was committed in the history of humanity. After Allah brought this to our attention, Allah say, and most certainly I prescribe ever since the law that I've given to Bani Israel in the time of Nabi Musa and all the prophets that came, that whosoever kills another human being without justice because you can only take the life of another person if they have committed murder or they spread so much corruption and disorder that a legal court must pass the judgment that this person must get the death sentence only then a life can be taken but you cannot just take a life it must follow due process, legal process, according to this ayah of the Quran. And then Allah say, whosoever does not follow this due process, and you kill a person, just because the person disagree with you, or is of another faith, or you don't see eye to eye with you, then your killing that person is like you have killed the entire humanity, Allah say. But on the other hand, Allah say, if you are loving, you are compassionate, you reach out to people and you save a life. You save any person's life. In the eyes of Allah, Allah will hold you dear as if you have saved the lives of the entire humanity. This is the first principle that Islamic law lays down. Hifdun nafs. The preservation of life. To respect the sacredness of all life. You have this mindset of people who think they can strap bombs around them. And then they go into public places. Not facing the enemy that is fighting them. But go into public places where there's innocent civilians, innocent men innocent old people, innocent women and children, and they 
detonate those bombs and kill innocent people, thinking by detonating those bombs that they will from that time onwards go straight into Jannah, that they die shaheed. Let me tell you that Allah responds to that mindset. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَمَنْ يَقْتُلُ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدًا فِيهَا Because amongst those innocent civilians and victims, many a times you find many Muslims. And you, by your mindset, kill innocent Muslims also. So Allah say, whosoever kills an innocent believer on purpose, فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمْ Allah said, don't think you are flying straight to Jannah. No, you are flying straight to hellfire. خَالِدًا فِيهَا Allah say, you will abide in it forever. But listen to this. Listen to this. Allah say, وَغَدِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ And on such people, Allah will shower His curse, His, his anger and His wrath. وَلَعْنَهُ and Allah's curse will be upon them. وَعَدَّلَهُ عَذَابًا عَظِيمًا And Allah has prepared for them a grievous punishment and a grievous penalty. So this thing about creating chaos, suicide bombings of innocent people is definitely not on. Face your real enemy and do not kill innocent people. So what kind of mindset Teach this. Therefore, now more than ever, more than ever, our Muslim ummah should realize that the world needs peace. The world needs love. The world needs mercy and compassion. And we have that in the beautiful teachings of the glorious Quran and the sunnah of our beloved Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So here from this platform, in this holy hour of Juma, we express our abhorrence to the actions that were done in Sri Lanka and all over the world where innocent people are the recipients of unjust actions by oppressors and tyrants. And we show solidarity with the victims and their families because more than 200 people lost their lives in these bombings and hundreds scores of people were also injured and many people are suffering. Can you imagine what happened in New Zealand? Just when the whole Muslim world was showered with sympathy, with compassion, and it brought about such positive results, positive results, that many people embraced Islam. Now you find this, which brings about the opposite result for the Muslim world. There is a sick, diabolical mind at play to demonize Islam and to demonize Muslims. And it is a duty of each and every one of us to show to the world, speak to your friends, speak to your non-Muslim colleagues, Speak to your non-Muslim neighbors and friends and associates and give them the true message of Islam, the message of love, the message of peace, the message of coexistence with other people, with harmony and with peace. This is our duty as ambassadors of Islam. When you say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, each one of us, whether you are alim or not a alim, whether you are learned or not to learn it, every Muslim is an ambassador for Islam. And we need to portray Islam and project Islam in its true, in its true image and true form. And that is the form of justice, of peace, and of love. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant understanding. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that world peace come about. And I sincerely hope and pray, and I want you to join me in that dua to Allah, that that sick mind and sick ideology that is taking place does not come here, to that level. Although it, it is already starting, 
Because you find in our community, families breaking up because of difference of opinion. I personally, wallahi, I personally know of a young guy who came back after studying, come back with this Wahhabi ideology that everything is bidah and shirk and haram. He told his mother, Mom, I can't eat your food because you keep maulud. Astaghfirullah. What kind of mind is that? What kind of sickness is this? We were always a community when we had janazas. After the janazah salah, in fact, the Prophet teaches us that the Salatul Janazah in itself is a dua. But nowhere is it prohibited for you to make 10 extra duas if you want to. Yet you find people showing you a point, just taking the mayat and go and say, O siti taitum dua ta maakne. En si nuara hum salawate bachane. This is, is breaking our community apart. And therefore, if we have that mindset and that kind of attitude, then we are our biggest enemy. We don't need other enemies. May Allah bring love amongst us. May Allah grant us the capacity to realize that we are one ummah. And being one ummah, we must necessarily love one another. Because if you don't love one another, then your iman is not complete. لا تدخلوا الجنة حتى تؤمنوا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said none of you will enter Jannah unless you believe unless you have Iman did the Prophet stop there? no he went further and he said ولا تؤمنوا حتى تحابوا and your Iman is not complete unless and until you mutually love one another as Muslim brothers and Muslim sisters May Allah help us, may Allah guide us, may Allah always protect us, Amin. and may Allah shower us with his grace and mercy, Amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. Just a few announcements. <clears throat> we have been asked to make dua for a young boy, a young person by the name of Ilyas Ahmad. He's from New York, he is critically ill, and for all sick people at home and in hospital, we ask Allah to grant Shifa and Kamila, Amin. Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then, of course, the civic election platform will be taking place at the Rylands Primary Hall on Wednesday, the 1st of May. All parties, representatives will be there from the ANC, the DA, the EFF, the Good Party, all the smaller parties. They will be there to engage with the community and you will be also asked to give your input or ask them certain relevant questions with regard to the voting that will take place, inshallah. <clears throat> That from today for the weekend, we have Radio 786 Expo uh, at the Cape Town Conventional Center. And Masjid Al-Quds will also be having a lots of new stock on sale there. We have a stall, a table there. And we ask people to come and support the whole expo of Radio 786, as well as the Ramadan Expo, which is taking place at the Castle of Godo in, ta in town also. We promote it and we also encourage our communities to support both and to support every function of goodness to keep and hold on to that unity in our community, inshallah. And there's a very special announcement I want to make, but before I make that last announcement, we have Haji Yunus Ali here who brought for us the Gaza soccer team from the Gaza, from Palestine. I just want them, Haji Yunus, to stand that the people can see who they are because we want to welcome them. Can the team stand? Ahbabuna min Philistine min Gaza, Kumu. This is our team from Palestine. Takbir! 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 Allahu Akbar wa lillahi alhamd. And we have our start here, who is the leader, mashallah, the Rais. Ahlan wa sahlan, niyabatan anil jamaat, wal ahl fi kiptan, nurahibukum wa nakulu lakum alf marhaban ahlan wa sahlan, natasharraf bi hudurikum hina. Allah yubarikum fi inshallah. So, yes, they will still be playing a few soccer matches and uh, we will support them, inshallah. And they are very pleased to be here and they are tasting what freedom is to play soccer 
without fear of the Israeli army attacking them, to taste the freedom of interaction. So I want to ask all my young brothers, all my young brothers, before you leave the masjid after Jummah, kindly come forward, meet your young brothers from Palestine, and say welcome to them, and hug them, and make them feel welcome here, inshallah ta'ala. Peruh bidam nafdika ya aqsa. Amin ya rabbal alameen. Jamaat, I want you to listen to me for two minutes, please. A very important announcement. And this announcement really comes from my heart. And I want you to listen and understand. Because I don't want to keep anything away from this Jamaat. Nothing that happens at this masjid must be kept away from the Jamaat. You must be fully in touch with what is happening because we also want your full support in whatever we do. It is with regard to our invitation for Al Ustad Numan Ali Khan, whom we have invited to be our guest this Ramadan. And you know, every year for Ramadan, we really try to source good scholars like Mufti Meng, Sheikh Nanawi, and across the spectrum for the benefit of this community. And Alhamdulillah, people come from all over, from various areas to come and benefit from these scholars. So first and foremost, allow me to say that Masjid Al-Quds is an independent masjid. But we fully cooperate with the MJC, with Iksa, with Islamia, with Habibia, with Mill Street, with Claremont Main Road Masjid, and across the board. We fully cooperate with anyone, as Allah says, cooperate with one another on the basis of that which leads to righteousness and God consciousness. The hallmark of this Masjid Al-Quds has always been our open door policy, which is a policy internationally acclaimed and respected and admired, alhamdulillah. And we will never succumb in giving up that open door policy. In the past, certain people had problems with Mufti Meng coming here. When Mufti Meng came, they accused us of being Wahhabis. Then Sheikh Nanawi came, they accused us of being Sunni. Then this one came, we were Shia. And this one came, we were modernists. But Alhamdulillah, we are Ahlu Sunnah wal Jamaah. The people who believe in the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we love the Ahlul Bayt and we love the noble Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And despite all these objections, we never succumbed and we never gave in. And we never will. Because if we succumb, then that will set a very, very bad precedent. This year for Ramadan, Ustaz Numan Ali will be coming as our guest. Some quarters have picked up some issues with regard to Numan Ali Khan, dating back to the year 2017. When these reports were presented to us, we didn't just ignore it. The committee sat down with the imamat. We looked at it. We scrutinized the allegations, the accusations. We scrutinized the reply of Numan Ali Khan. And we also sought the expert opinion of highly acclaimed scholars around the world. And this is what we took into account. And then after looking at this, we found that no due process was ever followed. The man was never found guilty legally in a court of law, nor shar'an, meaning according to sharia. The man did admit he had some flaws and he made mistakes, and he asked maaf. And who are we not to give people maaf? Who are we? We don't know what happened in 27 could be or could not be. Allah knows best. And Allah is the one, as it says in the Quran, He is the best of judges. 
We do not judge each other. For Jesus Christ so beautifully say, do not judge. For if you judge, you will be judged. What we do know, however, as Master Kutz, is that Numan Ali Khan has asked for forgiveness. And as we approach this holy month of Ramadan, which is a month of mercy, a month of compassion, we at Masjid Al-Quds don't only ask maaf, we also give maaf to others who ask maaf. If a person asks maaf for whatever you did, whatever I did in the past, if I made toba and I sincerely repented back to Allah, no one can accuse me and say, you're not fit to stand there because you did so and so. That's between me and my Allah. And all of us are going to be judged individually in the divine supreme court of Allah. And therefore, my beloved Jamaat, like every year in Ramadan, once again this year of Ramadan, I invite you all to join us on this beautiful journey through Ramadan with Ustaz Numan Ali Khan. He will be running his world-acclaimed 10-day course, which is 10 days of understanding the Quran and a journey through the Quran. There will be a price affixed to this course, but I am telling you on behalf of the Masjid Committee, if anyone wants to come and do that 10-day course and they can't afford the money, please come and speak to us. Please come and speak to us. We will see how we can assist, inshallah. Because no one must be denied knowledge just because they don't have the money. So please, people, I want to urge you that especially our young people, they are great, great fans of Numan Ali Khan because he's one of the most outstanding and foremost motivational speakers in the world today. And he's no stranger to us. He was already here. Two years ago, he stood here in this very place for Juma, and he ran very successful courses on Surah Yusuf, etc., and the allegations of the enemies of Islam against our mother, Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, he beautifully protected her integrity and her honor, and he replied those, to those allegations. So everyone is invited to come and benefit from our beautiful Ramadan program that we are planning. And inshallah, we hope that this coming Ramadan will be a great Ramadan for all of us. Amen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Shukran for giving me an ear. And I hope that you understand that I'm not standing here in condemnation of anyone. Wallahi, I think those who know me, you know me as a peace-loving person. I don't like unnecessary confrontation. I don't like negativity in our community. I will go beyond that extra mile to bring about reconciliation and understanding in our community. So let us all imbibe and embrace that spirit. Amen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Anything you want to say, Ajayun?